day Cause the Bible tells me to I obey because I love God I obey cause I love my mom and dad I read my to the Bethel Eritrean Church Sunday School program. We will be showing many teachings and songs for you to follow along with. We hope you enjoy it. Hi guys, my name is Blessing and today I will be talking about obedience. In the Bible there are many examples to have about obedience. For example, let's take Abraham and the Lord. One, the Lord once asked Abraham to sacrifice his only son that he had waited for nearly a hundred years. This was a very difficult thing to ask of Abraham. But because Abraham loved God and more importantly loved obeying God, he decided to do what God asked him to of. But even though this made him feel sad, in the end God saw the great obedience in Abraham had for him and allowed his son to live and told him it was a test of his obedience. This encourages us to aim to be as obedient as Abraham because God will bless us and reward us like he did to Abraham. Thanks for watching. Hope this message stays in your heart. Hi, I am Natu Abraha and I am here to going to tell you about obeying God. But what is obeying God? Well, let's find out. Today we are going to we are talking about being obedient to God and our parents. Let us start a prayer. Loving Father, your son Jesus was so obedient that he humbled himself to death on the cross. His prayer was yet yeah, not as I will, but as your you will. I desire to be like a Jesus, but so often fall short of my goal. Dear God, when I feel like disobeying, please help me to think of the promise you gave us in the Bible. When I obey my parents, things will, things will go well for me. Dear God, please send your Holy Spirit to help me be obedient to you, my parents and teachers. Amen. Adam and Eve tangle with a snake. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 to 17, or Genesis chapter 3. One day, Satan convinced Eve to try the forbidden fruit, and Adam ate some too. Instead of doing what God asked them to do, they did what Satan wanted them to do. What did God do when Adam and Eve disobeyed him?
Adam and Eve felt very badly after they had disobeyed, but God had to discipline them anyway. He had to send them out of the beautiful garden. Let's see another example. Abraham obeys when it is difficult. God asked Abraham to take his family and move to an unknown country. Abraham followed God's instructions even though it was hard. Because Abraham obeyed, God promised to make Abraham into a great nation and he did. God rewards obedience generously. Let's, so let's so let's read some other examples of Abraham's obedience. What other difficult gods requested Abraham obey? To sacrifice his son Isaac. He did not question God, but obeyed. Let's read, an, let's read another example. A disobedient wife. Genesis chapter 19 verse 15 to 29 and second Peter or two sec or second Peter chapter 2 verse 4 to 10 Lot tried to honor God in everything he did and to live how God wanted him to but Lot and his family lived in a city full of very wicked people. Two angels came and told Lot to take his family and hurry out of the city and not to look back. As God was about to destroy the city, Lot's wife disobeyed the, the instructions given by the angels and looked behind her as they were fleeing the city. Let's let's read some other examples of the of of Lot's wife's disobedience. After Lot's wife disobeyed, what happened to her? God dealt with her disobedience severely, turning her into a pillar of salt. Let's see some other examples. Mary obeyed God. What did Mary say when Angel Gabriel came told to her what that she will, she will have a son. I am willing to be used of the Lord. Let it happen to me as you have said. Mary didn't question God's call on her life. Let's, leave some, let's read some other examples. Sad Shadrach, Meshach and Amendigo obey when it is hard. Daniel chapter 3. King Nebuchadnezzar ordered everyone to bow down to a golden statue. He even made a law saying that anyone who did not bow down to the statue will be thrown into a ferny furnace. But Shadrach, Meshach and Amendigo refused to bow down to the statue. They chose to obey God's will, regarding idols which says you shall not bow down to them or worship them. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 9 verse 8 to 9. Let's see some other examples of Shadrach, Meshach and Amendigo's obedience. What did they do? that they might die, Shadrach, Meshach and Amendigo still chose to obey God rather than the king. God rewarded the obedience by protecting them when they were thrown into a furnace full of fire. Let's read some other examples. Jonah learns to obey the hard way. God gave Jonah a job to do. He wanted Jonah to go to a city of Nivea and warn them about that God was planning to discipline all the people there because of their evil behaviour. But instead of doing what God asked, John, Jonah run, ran away. He joined some sailors on a boat headed for Tarish. L let's read some other examples of Jonah's disobedience. How did God choose to discipline Jonah? 
God sent a frightening storm. Jonah realized the storm was his fault. Jonah told the sailors to throw him overboard to save their own lives. Instead of letting Jonah drown, God sent a big fish to swallow him. Jonah spent three days and nights on the belly of the fish. When Jonah was in the fish, he prayed and told God that he was sorry for not obeying. God let him out of the fish, giving him another chance. This time, Jonah was ready to obey God. He went and told the people of Nevia that God wanted them, wanted them to stop doing wrong. <coughs> Let's read some other examples. Jesus lived a life of complete obedience to his father. How did Jesus honour the authority of his father through complete obedience? For I did not speak on my own in the right, but the father himself who sent me has given me command what to say and what to speak John chapter 12 verse 49 I seek not on my own but the will of my father who sent me John chapter 5 Father if you are willing to take this cup from me not yet not my will but yours will be done Luke chapter 22 verse 42 He obeyed God until death Let's, so what do we learn from these? Being obedient to God and our parents has benefits and blessings. Long life, protection, gladness, great, pre, great peace and, pre, and, pre, and presence of Christ in our life. Answers to God bless you. Bye.
Children, obey your parents the way the Lord wants. This is the right thing to do. The command says, honor your father and mother. This is the first command that has a promise with it. The promise is, then everything will be well with you and you will have a long life on earth. But why should we obey our parents? That's a good question. Well, as I've just read, the first reason why you should obey your parents is because in the commandments, the fifth commandment says, honor your father and mother. The second one is that they have helped you through your life. The third one and the most good one is that in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 3 it says that this is the one that has the promise with it. The promise is that everything that everything will be well with you and you have a long life on earth, meaning that you will have a long life and that you will have a good life on earth. May your day be blessed. And I hope you have learned something new today. Bye. Bye. John chapter 3 verse 16 For God loved the world so much that he gave his only son God gave God gave his son so that whoever believes in him may not be lost but have eternal life Welcome to my channel. My name is Emnet, and today we will be learning about the crucifixion. But before we start, let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for everything that you've done. I thank you for dying on the cross for our sins that we can go to heaven with you. I pray that everyone here watching will get something out of this lesson and anyone who needs will find you. I pray that these people will go back to their homes or go and share this amazing word with their family and friends. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, now let's read. We will be reading in Luke 23, verses 39 to 43. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. You can use the online Bible, which will be linked in the description below. Also, make sure to take notes. Okay, let's start. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me okay. in heaven. So here are the three crosses. Do you know who these two people are? Yes, they are criminals and they did things that God does not want us to do. Do you know who the person in the center is? Yes, that is Jesus. He died on the cross for our sins so that we do not have to go to hell, but we can go to heaven. So as they were on the cross, this criminal said, Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. Wow, this criminal did not repent at all. Then this criminal rebuked him and said, Don't you fear God? Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Wow. And then Jesus replied saying, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. That is amazing. He has become a child of God. Jesus forgave his sins and all of his sins are washed away. So that means that he is a clean he will go to paradise with jesus like he said wait how about this criminal he didn't repent so hmm, let's see <gasps> he's unclean 
because he didn't repent. Let's talk about Jesus. What do you think is on the other side? Jesus is perfect, so let's see. <gasps> Jesus is perfect. He's never done anything wrong. Why is Jesus like this? Let's check 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 to see why. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By whose wounds you have been healed. It's because when Jesus died on the cross for our sins, he took all of our sins so that we do not have to go to hell, but we can go to heaven because when we sin, we deserve to die. But instead, Jesus took our place and now we don't have to die and we get to go to heaven and by his wounds we are healed what did you learn i learned that we should never doubt god and we should a admit that we are sinners b believe in jesus and c confess that jesus is lord and remember jesus carried our sins on the cross so that we do not have to die but we can go live with him in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. This week's craft slash challenge is to make these crosses at home. The instructions will be in the link in the description below. Make sure to send this to your family and friends so they can learn about the crucifixion as well. Hope you guys have an amazing day. Bye.
hope you enjoyed the songs and teachings that we've showed so far. We have more to come, so stay with us. Hello, my name is Mose. I'm Nathan. And my name is Peter. Today we'll be talking about obedience. Obedience means what I have been at for the first time, completely joyful and without complaining. God tells us to obey. You shall walk after the Lord, your God, and fear him, and keep his commandments and obey his voice, and you shall serve him and hold fast to him. Father, God empowers us to obey, and God is able to make all grace and bound to you, so that having an all sufficiency in all the things you do, you may abound in every good work. God blesses us when we obey. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord who walks in his ways. You shall eat the food, the fruit of labour in your hands. You shall be blessed and it shall be with you. If if you obey God, he'll bless you with an amazing future. Summarising everything, if you obey, there will always be a reward. Like when Noah obeyed God, when God, um, when Noah went outside to speak to God, God told him to build the ark. If Noah didn't trust him and didn't obey his commandments, then him and his family would have been washed away. Thank, well, thank you for what. To talk things off, Peter wants to say a few things. God, help us to obey with a good attitude right away every day. Thanks for watching. We hope you benefited from this. Bye. God bless, God bless you. My name is Grace. My name is Nehemiah. And my name is Mercy. We're going to be asking questions to test your knowledge on the story of David and Goliath. So, I'll be asking you eight questions. And for every question, you have five seconds to answer. Let's get started. My first question is, what army was Goliath in? Your time's up. He was in the Philistine army. My second question is, who was the king at the time of the battle? Time's up. King Saul. Correct. And my third question is, what book was the story recorded in? First Samuel. Correct. My fourth question is, how many brothers, brothers did David have? Hands up. Seven brothers. Correct. My fifth question is, what did what was David's father's name? Jesse. Correct. Six. My sixth question is, who what did David work as? He worked as a shepherd. Correct. My seventh question is, who anointed David? Samuel, the prophet Samuel. Correct. And my last question is, how tall was Goliath? Nine to ten feet. Correct. So, we. I hope that you did good in these questions. But I got one more question for both of you. What was the moral of the story? The moral of the story was to have faith in God. Like David, he had faith in God. Everybody was telling him he is too small. But God had plans, plans for him when he was older. And he trusted in God. Then he defeated Goliath, the giant. Well done. Amen. Amen. So, the moral of the story is that no matter what, David had faith and nothing could stop him. No matter what, have faith in God. Yes, these are very good morals. So, we should always have faith in God, no matter what. Remember last week, we were talking about to have faith in God. And this links to our topic. To have faith in God, no matter what happens. Faith, just like David and Goliath, I was saying faith is a key. It can get you out of anything. Just like David and Goliath. Dave, faith got David out of that battle. Faith got David to win that battle because of his faith. David made 
Goliath made him look big on the outside, but really, with God, he, you could have defeated him like this. So we should always have faith, no matter what, because faith is the only thing that will get us out of anything we do. Faith, faith is an amazing tool to use as Christians. So we hope you learned, we hope you learned something new today, and we hope you did good in those questions. And we'll see you next week. Bye! Hello, I am Asha, and today I will be telling you about obedience. Since God created man, obedience is one of the main things he asks from us. And just like anything else God asks from us, is for our own good. Adam and Eve were told not to eat only one fruit, but they couldn't help themselves, and they ate it anyway. Then, because they ate only one fruit, they put a curse on mankind that was only lifted ages later when Jesus came. This clearly shows how disobeying can be more costly than we can imagine. God created us as his people and as we are his people we will follow our king's command. For those who follow his command there is everlasting life but for those who don't, there is certain death. Today we're going to be learning about obedience. So can you please get your Bibles and turn to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. Children and parents. Children, obey your parents the way the Lord wants. This is the right thing to do. The command says, honour your father and mother. This is the first command that has a promise with it. The promise is that everything will be well with you and you will have a long life on the earth. So what does obedience mean? Obedience means to be loyal to the Lord and to do his good will. So the one we should obey first is the Lord. Then after comes next is our fathers and mothers. So who obeyed the Lord in the Bible? There are lots of examples. And one of them is Abraham. The Lord wanted to test Abraham. So he said to Abraham, go and sacrifice your son for me, your only son. And then Abraham obeyed the Lord. And then after, whilst he was about to sacrifice his son to the Lord, the Lord said, stop. You, because you have obeyed me, you're going to have descendants and descendants. And all of your family is going to be blessed. So who would disobey the Lord in the Bible? There are lots of people who disobey the Lord in the Bible, but one of them is Adam and Eve. You guys already know the story. The snake tempted Adam and Eve to eat the fruit. And because of that, they disobeyed the Lord, even though the Lord told them not to eat the fruit. So they were banished from the Garden of Eden. So as a result, because of their disobedience, they were bringing sin to humanity. Thank like God, Jesus brand grace. So, what is it in it for us? What do we get if we obey the Lord? The Lord said, if you obey me, I will protect you. I will, I will call over you. I will take care of you. And I will bring you all that you need. It's like what Samuel said to Saul. The Samuel said to Saul, the Lord doesn't want sacrifices. He wants more of obedience. So let's all remember this, guys. We should always obey the Lord and our fathers and mothers because he wants us to bring, to do well, to do well. And he wants us to have, to, to have long lives on earth. So guys, that's the end of the lesson. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.
Hello everybody, my name is Betty and today I'm going to be talking about obedience. I'm going to be starting off by saying a verse from John 14, 24. Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. What Jesus is saying is that those who love him will obey his teaching. God will love them and God and Jesus will come to them and live with them. Ways that we can show obedience to God is by immersing ourselves in his words and keeping our thoughts pure. This means spend time with the Bible, pray daily, avoid gossip and negative situations, and also stop watching, reading or listening to the things that don't align with his principles. We can also memorize the scriptures. As children of God, we should be obeying God and our parents. I hope you all have learned something from this today. Have a blessed day. Bye. Hey kids, today we're going to talk about another kid basic. The second thing you need to know to survive as a kid. Let's talk about obedience. Get, Get ready. ready. What are some of the rules in your house? Clean your room, take out the garbage, do your homework, no fighting. Maybe you don't like rules. I don't always either. But you know what? Obeying our parents is really important. We should do it for two reasons. First, we should obey God because the Bible says so. Our memory verse says, Obey your parents for this pleases the Lord. Now, if you don't have a parrot, you can always obey your dog or your cat. No, not your parrot. Your parents. Obey your parents. Oh, that makes more sense. Now, I don't know about you, but if obeying your parents pleases God, then that's what I want to do. So we're done, right? That's it. Obey your parents because the Bible says so. No, there's another reason. We should also obey our parents for our protection. Let me demonstrate with this hula hoop. This is a big O for obedience. Think of obeying like staying inside the boundaries, you know, inside the circle. Stay inside the boundaries your parents have set and you are safe. Step outside the circle and the masked menace will get you. So one time my mom told me to do my homework but I really wanted to watch my favorite TV show. And another time, my parents told me to stop bugging my sister, but she just looks so lonely. And when my dad asked me to take out the garbage, I kinda got distracted on the way. Get the idea? Just obey, it's for your protection. And one more thing, if you wanna survive and win as a kid, then don't forget the ice. It's a simple way to remember how to obey. We should obey immediately, cheerfully, and exactly. So kids, don't forget, obey your parents. And today are we going to show you the book of Jonah. The book of Jonah is a fascinating book that tells, that tells of a man who learned one good lesson in obedience to God. We are going to discuss the key concepts, some questions and answers. What did God ask Jonah to do? Go to Nineveh. Did Jonah obey God? No. What did Jonah do instead? He ran away from God and went to Tarshish. In what way God disciplined Jonah? He sent the storm and Jonah realised that the storm was his foot. So he said, throw me inside the sea. And then they threw him inside the sea. How did God deliver him from being drowned? He sent to the whale to swallow him. And then what? he prayed inside the whale's tummy. And then God said to the whale, spit him out in dry land. So the whale spit him out. What did Jonah do this time? He obeyed God and went to Nineveh and told him to stop doing their sins. The life of Jonah teaches us that what God desires is not always what we want. However, God's way is perfect because he is perfect and knows the best for us. 
So what we learn from the life of Jonah is that when we choose to obey God, the consequences usually reward it with some kind of clear consequence. A blessing in some way, whether in this lifetime or the life to come. But when we choose to disobey, we usually make a mess of things, thereby paying price. We choose to obey God because we love him and respect him, not because we want to avoid punishment. We obey him because we want to please our Saviour. I am going to read from 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22. And Samuel said, Have the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. For hold to obey is better than sacrifice, and to listen than the fat of rams. Thank you for listening, and that's what we have today. God bless you. Bye! Hello, my name is Noah, and I'm going to be talking about obedience. I'm going to be talking about the story of Noah and reading Genesis chapter 6, verse 13. It says, God said to Noah, I have decided to put an end to the whole human race. I will destroy them completely because the world is full of their violent deeds. Build a boat for yourself out of good timber. Make room in, make room in it and cover it with tar inside and out. Make it 133 meters long, 22 meters wide, and 13 meters high. Make a roof for the boat and leave a space of 44 centimeters between the roof and the sides. Build it with three decks and put a door in the side. I'm going to send a flood on the earth to destroy every living being. Everything on earth will die, but I'll make a covenant with you. Go into the boat with your wife, your sons, and their wives. Take into the boat with you a male and a female of every kind of animal and of every kind of bird in order to keep them alive. Take along all kinds of food for you and for them. Noah did everything God, God commanded. So what I learned from that is that God was very specific about what kind of wood and what kind of like what how much centimeters he wanted it or meters and even though it was a lot to handle Noah Noah didn't go his own way and he followed God's way and I'm going to be reading a scripture to you about Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19 it says if you will only obey me you will eat the good things the land produce so it's talking about that if you do if you do good things in your life then god will do good things for you and so that if you are respectful to other people then god will reward you with other things um thank you for listening to this goodbye thank you for watching all the ceremonies and songs today we hope you enjoyed and we hope to see you next week god bless
Cause I knew you'd still be there You'd never leave me gone I want to say thank you I was lost and you found me I was dead inside and you breathed into me And you brought these bones alive I want to say thank you Thank you for saving me Thank you for loving me unconditionally you keep on loving me anyway Oh, you'd never stop loving me God I want to say thank you I was lost and you found me I was dead inside and you breathed to me and you brought these bones to life I want to say thank you thank you for saving me thank you for loving me unconditionally God oh thank you Still